it's time to chill out, get your coffee, and get your slip on. This is the folding slip daily dose. Oh, that kid went on a fucking hoot of a fucking adventure. George no, trust me, him. that drug would fucking make you, like, go further than you've ever gone in a masturbatory rage. <laughs> And then they see this UFO or whatever it is, this diamond-shaped thing. So, and and then three helicopters come whizzing in and everything takes off. I don't know if I buy it, motherfucker. Did Bigfoot come out and tickle somebody's balls? Alright, you hooligans. 40 and slip, daily dose. Starts. Hello everybody, and welcome to the Fortean Slip Daily Dose, episode 31. This is the Freaky Future episode. We recently had Jay Cooney on to discuss underwater cryptids and great show we had with him I got talking with Jay about the down the rabbit hole with David Batdorf that I was planning on doing at the time about life after man and what I thought would go down and Jay and I got talking about this field which I did not know was like a thing uh, speculative zoology or speculative biology and in particular, he sent me some images of some stuff that come came from a book written by a Scottish geologist uh, called After Man. And this was written in 1981. And it was a hypothesis of how the Earth would change 50 million years from now. And he also wrote a couple other books uh, the one that I noticed uh, more than the others, I don't know how many there are exactly, was Man After Man. And Man After Man went into how man would evolve on the face of the planet and what would happen if man left the planet and then came back. Uh, and how man on the planet would be different and how man that left and went into space would be different. There's some fucking weird shit in that. There's, like, these, uh, parasite people. Just, ugh, it's pretty fucking weird. But I, you know, after Jay had sent me this stuff, I, I'd been thinking about it, and I wanted to at least introduce the topics. Because we, I, I plan on doing something about all of this, uh, and more in depth. But I, I started reading into this after man and man after man and what this Dougal Dixon has done. And, um, and it's just some really neat shit. Um, I'll put all the uh, links down below. Um, I got most of this from the wiki and there's an io9 article that was put out. There's also a an old, I believe it's a Japanese film or it's Japanese dubbed or... I don't know exactly. I could not find an English version of it, of After Man. And it goes through, and it has, like, it looks like there's some type of puppetry uh, that they used, and also stop motion to, to because this was back in the day when there wasn't any uh, CGI like we have now, where we see, like, you know, fucking walking with dinosaurs and... You know, there's a CGI dinosaur. It's not like the old fucking stop motion days of uh, Sinbad. So, I, I found that as well. And that's in the io9 article, but I'm going to put the link to that underneath as well because I'm going to reference it a couple of times. But, and this stuff is, this stuff here is right from the wiki. Dixon assumed that Europe and Africa would eventually fuse, closing up the Mediterranean. Asia and North America would collide and close up the Bering Strait. South America would split off from Central America. Australia would collide with Southern Asia, uplifting a mountain range. Finally, parts of Africa would split off to form a new island, which he called Lemuria. 
Other volcanic islands have been added, such as the Pacas Archipelago and Batavia. While there are a wide variety of creatures in Afterman, many of these can fall into groups. So I'm going to look at a few of them, and then I'm going to talk about a couple of things that I found pretty cool. The first one we're going to look at here is the Rabix, and I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Rabix fill in the void of deer, zebra, giraffes, and antelope, but descended, as the name suggests, from rabbits. They live in almost any environment, and they mostly feed on grass. Their anatomy represents that of ungulates, but there are a few primitive hopping forms lurking around. They look mostly to me like a deer mixed with a rabbit. Pretty pretty simple as far as that goes. The next thing on the list is the gigantelope. And the gigantelope take the niche in the future that was formerly held by elephants, giraffes, moose, musk oxen, rhinoceroses, and other large herbivores. Resembling the ancient sauropods, they are descended from antelope and range in a wide variety of forms. One subbranch have evolved into large moose-like herbivores of the north, the hornheads. In that video that I'm going to put underneath, there is some footage of these things like walking around, eating. They're done in stop motion. The Rabix, they, I believe when I was watching it, those are the ones that they did almost like a, uh, a puppet. It looked like a big fucking stuffed animal that was getting moved around. But I couldn't stop watching I like I, I put it on and I was like, this is so bad, but it's kind of cool. And I couldn't understand any of it because it's all in Japanese. If, in fact, it is in Japanese, I don't, you know, I, I'm pretty sure it is. The last thing that they show here on the wiki is the predator rats. Now, unlike my idea that I put forth in the Life After Man thing that David and I did, I said that, you know, I thought that dogs would take over as the top predator, the apex predator. And here, uh, Dougal Dixon assumes that rats are going to take over in all forms, that they're going to become like polar bears, like wolves, like wolverines, like cats. They're just going to diverge off into all these different, you know, types of fucking predators that just are going to hunt the fucking planet. In the pictures they got of them, I couldn't find that many of them. I found a couple. Most of them were really small. Uh, The one that I've put up is the best one that I could find. I I figured I'd at least throw something up. There were some other ones that looked really cool, but they were so small, I didn't think they'd translate well. So I just said, ah, fuck it. But the other things that I wanted to look at were the apes that hunt the plains. he, He assumed that apes would become like these pack animals, very much like uh, cats and almost like dogs in a way, the same idea, where they would hunt in packs on the on the plains. This leopard-like ape called the Horain, another one that is, I would assume, is a descendant of the baboon called the Raboon. And the Raboon seems to be much bigger than the Horain, at least in this it, video that they show that uh, the Japanese fucking stop motion video. And there is some stop motion of these things, the Horains hunting. And that's kind of what, that's what they reference in the io9 article that got me to look at it. And then I started looking at the videos and there's a whole slew of videos on it uh, that you might want to check out if, you know, this interests you. And the other thing, and this is the thing that Jay had sent to me that really got me looking into this are these flightless bats. These things are pretty fucking interesting, the way he has them set up. It, it, the interesting thing, I guess, he, here is, is that bats have never evolved to become flightless that we know of. And birds have. Like, birds have... There are birds that do not fly, whereas there are not bats that do not fly. And this, these flightless bats that he suggests will come about hunt on the ground in packs using echolocation and just eat everything. And their hind legs kind of hang over and they walk on their front. They're fucked up looking things. And the other one, which I happened to notice when I was looking for pictures, but I had read about it when I was doing the research here for today's show, is are these bats that evolved to look like flowers so that they can catch the insects coming down to, you know, feed on you know, the nectar. Uh, they're, I believe they're in with the picture of the flightless bats that hunt in packs there. Uh, but just all really cool, cool shit. 
when he sent this to me, I was just, I started looking through it and pretty out there stuff. And yeah, that bat is called the Night Stalker. If you look into the stuff that he he talked about in Man After Man, that gets even way further down the rabbit hole of evolution. The fucking parasitic people and the people who like genetically modified and there's like underwater people he just took it he went for a fucking stroll everywhere when it came to this subject incredibly creative imagination yeah if you get a chance check out Dougal Dixon check out the video that I posted below you know it is kind of crappy you can't like follow what the fuck they're saying unless you know Japanese which I don't I think I'm gonna at some point take a look at this book I'm definitely going to start looking for it when I go out doing my bookshop and I go out to a, a couple of used bookstores every so often and just peruse around. So I will, uh, I'll will i definitely be taking a look for this while I'm out. This has been the 40 and Slip Daily Dose, episode 31 like this shit hit the like button leave a comment if you don't hit that thumbs down button don't be afraid as always you will not hurt my feelings that's what it's there for subscribe give us some love people Hoping a new Down the Rabbit Hole with David Baddorf will go off, I think in February. <laughs>